Phoenix is a huge city and it's hard to know everything about a place before you move there. Uh, so I've got 10 random things that I think you need to know before moving to Phoenix. If you're north of downtown in Phoenix, Scottsdale, Glendale, or Peoria, you're gonna run into streets and avenues. Central Avenue runs right down the middle of Phoenix and it is the delineation of where the streets and the avenues start. The streets uh, start at Central Avenue and go east counting up. And the avenues start at Central Avenue and go west counting up as well. So you can run into 40th Street and 40th Avenue and they're actually 80 blocks apart, which is 10 miles. It can take a while to uh, get the hang of it once you've uh, moved here. I know that I got confused a lot um, when I first moved to here to the valley. I lived in Scottsdale, but I had to go over uh, west of Central, so I was in both the avenues and the streets, and it was quite confusing. You need to drink a lot of water, and it's not just in the summer. Um, our climate here is very dry, and so it's important that you drink a lot of water. When my parents moved here, uh, my dad was having trouble with his eyes and with his teeth, and finally he broke down and went to the dentist. He told him, look, there's nothing wrong with your teeth. You're just not drinking enough water. If you move here, you've got to know that you have to be diligent about drinking enough water. Scottsdale is huge, so you want to be mindful if you're going someplace in Scottsdale, kind of like the streets and the avenues, you need to check on where you're wanting to go in Scottsdale before you head out. It's actually 31 miles from the northern edge to the southern edge near Tempe. Um, and in some places it's only a couple miles wide, so it's a really long but narrow city. If you're going to be spending any time in Scottsdale, you'll need to know where you're going. If you make a mistake, it could end up costing you half an hour to an hour to get to the right place that you were going. If you're spending time in Phoenix, there's a couple of areas that you want to be mindful of about when you go there or if you go there at all. The area between 19th Avenue and the I-17, kind of from central Phoenix up into about the Metro Center area can be a little sketchy if you're in there at, at night. Um, 19th Avenue has become a major corridor through there. There's a lot of bus stops, there's light rail stops there, and those are places where um, homeless people or um, people of questionable character will hang out. If you're going to those areas, it's something that you just need to be mindful of. Um, like any place, you know, be aware of your surroundings and know what you're getting into. Um, there's also areas in western Phoenix along McDowell Road and Indian School and the I-10 corridor as you leave downtown. Um, those areas are similar to the area along uh, I-17 and the 19th Avenue. If you're considering a move here to Phoenix, be sure and check out my free relocation guide. It's full of information on all the different cities and communities here in the Phoenix metro area. It's also a great way to learn about our cities and which may be the best fit for you. You're definitely going to want a sunshade in your car and it's going to take a while if you're just if you keep your car out in the driveway like I do um, if it's three o'clock and I'm heading out to go somewhere I've got to roll all the windows down let all that hot air out it's going to take five ten minutes for my car AC to get cranking so especially in the summer you're going to need to be mindful what time of day you're needing to head out it's kind of like the winter in a lot of places you almost need to go outside and warm up your car well here you need to go outside and cool it down so that it's somewhat manageable uh, when you're traveling uh, late afternoon. No, there is no Starbucks at the top of Camelback Mountain. Um, you would think that there was one with how many people that are um, hiking these mountains. It's a very popular trail among tourists. The problem is, is it's very popular even in the summer and it's become a problem here on the popular Phoenix trails in the summer months and especially this past July when we had a record streak of temperatures over 110 degrees almost every day or every few days in the news you're seeing a story about someone being rescued off the trails and the one picture in the story that I read there were 10 um, fire and rescue personnel that had to go up on the trail to rescue this one lady who decided that she was going to go hiking around lunchtime if you're here and it's summer and you want to go hiking um, you need to be out there at 430 and be done by like 7. Otherwise you're taking um, your own health at risk and you're risking um, the health and safety of the people that have to come and rescue you. You need to drink more water than you think you do. I've lived here for 24 years now 
and I still find myself not drinking enough water. I know when I'm not drinking enough water, I feel lethargic, and it's just hard to get through the day. In most parts of the valley, the drain and storm water um, travels above ground. We don't have in-ground uh, storm sewers where if there's a big rain that everything goes into the gutters and it's just gone and it's um, going wherever it needs to go underground. Most of the storm water is going to be above ground and in the streets. So when we have monsoon season and we get a really hard rain, a lot of like uh, roads, the about half of the right lane will fill up with water that's uh, you know going downhill. So in places like North Scottsdale or if you're on the edge of the city, a lot of the roads have dips and um, the storm runoff can cover the road. In fact, we have what's called a stupid motorist's law here where they finally got tired of all the people that had to be rescued from their car that drove into flooded roads. And now if someone has to be rescued, they're sending that person the bill for all the equipment and personnel that was required to rescue them from their situation. If you come across a flooded road, you definitely want to uh, be careful and just don't risk it. Don't drive into flooded roads. <sighs> what are all of these Berto's restaurants? If you've spent any time here in Phoenix, um, you've probably come across um, Mexican restaurants named Filibertos or Rigobertos. The original was uh, Filibertos. It started in San Diego. They opened their first location here in Phoenix in 1993, and they're the biggest chain, but there's been a ton of copycat restaurants because of the success that they've had with Filibertos. Whatever part of the valley in, you're probably not too far from one of these style restaurants. Um, if you're craving Mexican food, it's a good way to go. Um, they're open 24 hours and you can get their breakfast options all day as well. So the Bertos restaurants are a great way to get a lot of food for not much money. The perception for most people that aren't in Arizona or haven't been here is that Phoenix and Arizona is full of retired people. And it's just not the case. Yes, there are parts of Phoenix that are um, highly desirable um, retirement destinations where people will move from other parts of town to come and take advantage of our better weather, but that doesn't mean that everyone here is of retirement age. Actually, the, the median age um, was under 38 years old here at the last uh, census, which was actually um, below the average for all 50 states. So if you look at the data, the state of Arizona is actually a millennial. Phoenix certainly isn't known for its public transportation, but we do have a light rail system. The light rail stretches north into central and north Phoenix. The light rail extends east from downtown Phoenix as well. You can take it uh, to Sky Harbor Airport, um, ASU, and it extends all the way out to East Mesa. If you're looking for an alternative to get to the airport and not have to deal with parking, or if you're heading downtown for uh, sporting or entertainment events, that's another great option.